Uh, <clears throat> good afternoon. This is Alorant Obi Jeremiah Yobami, an academic advisor from the Department of Political Science, University of Ibadan. Uh, we are today on lecture uh, 11 titled International Non-Governmental Organization, Humanitarian Organizations. So under International Non-Governmental Organizations, we want to look into humanitarian organizations. And the title of this course, you know, uh, is uh, International Political System and Africa Two, And the course code is uh, post 216. And uh, like I said, you know, earlier that uh, the, the course content end up on the lecture 11, and we are treating the last lecture today, and uh, which I will make good of my standpoint to give you a uh, mock uh, test to actually uh, prepare you very solidly, you know, for the forthcoming examinations especially you know when they ask you call off its strike and uh, i want to say this we should avail ourselves the opportunity of the ASU strike to quickly you know meet up those lapses you know that have been created you know uh, prior to the time of the ASU strike and i want to say that the ASU strike you know has been able to elongate you know our time to actually prepared and all that so today is the last you know, lecture on the post 216, which is, uh, you know, lecture 11. And, uh, you know, you will have been hearing about, you know, international non-governmental organizations, you know, like uh, Amnesty <laughs> International, okay. like uh, Direct Cross and the Water View. And uh, every individual, you know, uh, right from, you know, is, you know, you know, child days, will actually familiar himself or herself, you know, with uh, Red Cross and uh, uh, in the uh, Amnesty International and all that. You know, these, you know, uh, non-governmental organizations, you know, they are not, you know, any, you know, time involved with the government. They are solely on their own. That is why they are called non-governmental organizations. That is, they are the organizations you know, that uh, they are independent, okay, you know, of themselves because they are not being financed by the government. And my view, it is said that he uh, who pays the piper dictate the direction of the, you know, music tone. And uh, as a result of this, because they are, you know, financially independent and because, you know, their finances are emanate, you know, from memberships and all that, it, it, it makes them you know, not to be influenced, you know, by the government and the other. So, and, uh, you know, going by the Red Cross, which, you know, when we were young, you know, we were very familiar with, and right up to now, you know, by the, the way they dress, their logo and all that, you know, is to serve, you know, humanity, is to give humanitarian help, humanitarian assistance, okay, you know, to people who are in need, you know, of, you know, you know one, you know, kind of help or the other. And also, you know, in times of war, okay, be it civil war, be it, you know, external and what have you, humanitarian, you know, uh, humanitarian activities are very, you know, critically and fundamentally, you know, needed, you know, in such area. Because, you know, the aims and the purpose of these humanitarian organizations is to actually serve humanity to give support to people who are you know in need of one help or the other okay maybe you know medical help maybe financial assistance you know and what have you and is to make life you know more meaningful and successful you know for the entire you know populations for example you will agree with me that uh, what is happening in Syria okay the internal you know uh, wrangling in Syria, okay, you see that you know humanitarian you know organizations, you know, as an aspect of the United Nations organization, you know, try you know to give material relief, you know, to the to the people of Syrians who are displaced, okay, as a result 
of this uh, civil war, the Red Cross, you know, are there in order to actually, you know, give assistance and all that. Another Mandiria, you know, largesse that they are giving to them, like, uh, you know, you hear, if you are very conversant with international news, you know, we are, we have figures, you know, courtesy of, uh, you know, the humanitarian, you know, organizations that they will say, oh, about two point something million of Syrians have been displayed. Okay, they are the ones trying to give us all these figures and in which relief materials have been provided, you know, to those who have been displaced, you know, you know, uh, uh, from Syria. And they have, you know, a kind of a refugee camp in which these people are being, you know, uh, accommodated. Okay, provision of potable water, provision of medical, you know, uh, uh, facilities, drugs, you know, provision of clothes, clothing and other education and other. All these things, you know, are embedded, you know, in the principle of, uh, you know, international non-governmental, you know, organization. So, now, let us now, you know, look into one or two things so that we'll be well grounded you know, on this uh, uh, topic, and uh, you know, we are, it is said that the aims of uh, uh, this uh, uh, study, you know, is to actually introduce to us, you know, the international governmental uh, organization that is INGOS. Okay, with particular reference, you know, to human, you know, humanitarian organization. Then, you know, using amnesty here as a case study of, uh, you know, analysis, okay? And uh, let us quickly look into the objectives, okay? We have two very cogent, fundamental, you know, objectives here. And uh, one is, number one, to discuss what, you know, international non-governmental organizations are, then what, you know, humanitarian organizations are, and to discuss a detailed knowledge of Amnesty International, especially as it affects Africa. We want to look how Amnesty International affects Africa uh, you know, it's a global, you know, phenomenon that spread, you know, across the globe, okay, up to the uh, African uh, continent. Then let's quickly ask ourselves here, you know, some, pre, you know, uh, test, you know, questions here. And for example, let's say, what are the international organization of, you know, what are the international governmental organization? What, you know, you know, does it stand for? Okay, we want to know. Then, when was Amnesty International founded? We want to know when you know, Amnesty International you know, was uh, established and also what are its objectives? That is the objective of uh, Amnesty International, you know, yes. And also, how is it organized and uh, what are its achievements, particularly in Africa? So, after we've been able to look, you know, uh, its achievements globally, we now have to narrow it down to the African, you know, context. And as a student of, you know, African, you know, uh, politics, you know, it is said that charity actually begins uh, at home. There's nothing that you be, you study that does not first emanate from home affairs before it metamorphoses or metamorphoses into, you know, across the frontier, you know, of uh, of, of border. So, and uh, the content is the uh, international governmental, you know, uh, organizations. It is said that uh, you know they are voluntary, you know, organizations. Please take note of that. They are voluntary organizations. That is, organization that actually you know came into existence, you know, without the you know without the hand of any government or without the influence of any government or what have you. Okay, it, you know, voluntary uh, organization. And uh, here we said it is said that we have you know two major types of uh, international non-governmental organizations. Namely, we have voluntary and professional. These are the two okay, uh, major you know, types of uh, international non-governmental organization, the voluntary and the professional. Let us quickly look you know, those that fall under the voluntary. Okay? We have number one, we have Amnesty International. Amnesty International falls under the voluntary, okay? And we also equally have International Committee on the Red Cross, like I told you, ICRC. And we equally have International Federation of the Rights of Man and the International Institute 
of human rights you know struggle and churches and religious organization for example under you know the churches and the religious organization we have world council of churches world council of churches world jews congress etc and scholarship aid and student organization like uh, world university service world assembly of youth etc these are the you know international organizations that fall under the voluntary they are voluntary okay you know you know and uh, you know uh, um, the memberships are open okay to all and sundry anyone that is interested in joining you know these uh, organizations you know is free to actually do so without being coerced okay and uh, under the professional okay we have you know lawyers associations like the International Commission of Jurists, International Association of Democratic Lawyers, okay, ETC, and uh, professional organizations like International Press Institute, okay, Inter-Parliamentary Union, and World Freedom of uh, Scientific, you know, workers among others. Some INGOs, you know, like those dealing with uh, refugees, like uh, International Social, you know, Service, International Labor Associate are also example of an INGO, you know, else, okay? And also, let us quickly look into the work and activities of an INGO S. You know, it is said that they are very important to all, you know, initiatives on human rights and the humanitarian uh, services, okay? And it is said that in particular, okay, <clears throat> The human rights organization do initiate, you know, their own inquiries. They do initiate, uh, you know, their own uh, inquiries, okay, on human rights violation. They want to go across to go and see how human rights are being violated, because government can, you know, doctor information. Government can, you know, try, you know, to give false propaganda. Okay, about what is happening to the human rights abuses and all that. But international non governmental organizations, you know, because you know they are independent, you know, of government, they can they will go on their own and do you know uh, findings and compile data and give the result. So the results that they will give will be very you know uh, holistic, will not be manipulated, neither will it you know, be doctor like you know it can be on the part of uh, of government. So they go on their own, you know, for you know accurate uh, uh, findings. And uh, it, it also, you know, it is said that they make representation to the government in question and where necessary, influenced by lobbying the intergovernmental you know agencies. And also, you know, function of information. Okay, of <clears throat> on human rights violation and serve as channel of information. Okay, between nation, national affiliates and other interested uh, uh, organization. So and uh, we, you know it is said that uh, of all okay international non-governmental organizations. Okay, Amnesty International and Red Cross. Okay, organizations are well known to Africa. Among all the international non government you know, international non governmental organizations that we have across the globe, it is said, I repeat, that Amnesty International and the Red Cross organization are the two major international organizations that are very well known to you know uh, Africa. Okay? And uh, also, let us quickly go into the origin and aims of uh, Amnesty uh, International. It is said that Amnesty International has a modest, modest, you know, British uh, beginning. That is, you know, it, its beginning happens to, you know, have an uh, affiliation with a British, you know, model. Okay, and uh, it was founded by Peter Benson. That is Amnesty. International, it is said, you know, has a British model beginning, 
and uh, it was funded by uh, Peter Benson. So Peter Benson actually, you know, uh, uh, founded, you know, uh, Amnesty uh, uh, International in the United uh, Kingdom because, you know, it was founded in the United Kingdom. It will have a, you know, British uh, uh, model or anywhere that any organization is being found, you know, founded, it will have, you know, such area uh, model. If, you know, it happens that it was founded in Africa, it will have an African model, you know, as well. But because it was founded in, you know, uh, United Kingdom, it has a, a British uh, model uh, beginning, okay? And uh, it came into existence in 1961. Amnesty International came into existence uh, in 1961 with the aim of defending freedom of speech okay opinion and uh, religion in all parts of the world that is its aim was to defend freedom of speech freedom of opinion religion okay in all parts of the world from its modest beginning it has today built up a formidable reputation in the field of human rights war that is amnesty international Funded by you know, Peter Benson, you know, with aims of defending, you know, freedom of speech, freedom of opinion, religion. It is said, you know, as a, you know, a global, you know, reputation till today. And uh, let us look according to Amnesty International Report of 1978. It has now become a worldwide movement, which is independent of any government. Like I said, okay, political grouping ideology, economic interest, or religious creed. And the uh, Amnesty International Organization, which is a voluntary or movement of activities, <clears throat> a movement of active volunteer members, play a you know, specific role within you know, the overall spectrum of human rights war. It has formal relations with the United Nations, economic and social you know, uh, council, you know, ec you know, ECOSO, you, you know, UNESO, the Council of Europe and Organization of American States and the OAU. It has, you know, a kind of formal relations, you know, with all these international, you know, organizations, which has been said, even up to, you know, uh, organization of uh, African unity now metamorphosed into African uh, Union. And the activities of the organization focus strictly on, you know, prisoners. That is Amnesty International Organization it activities, which is said, uh, you know, focus mainly on the prisoners. Okay. Number one, let us look, you know, at all this, you know, focus on the prisoner. Number one, it seeks to release of men and women detained anywhere for their belief, color, sex, ethnic origin, language. Or religion provided they have not used or advocated violence these are term prisoners of conscience or political prisoners detained without charge or without trial you know oh uh, there's some certain you know people or persons that have been you know wrongly in prison in our various uh, prison yard across you know the globe and uh, you know some may be detained because of their color why some may be detained because of their religion? Why some, you know, you know, may be detained because of their sex? Why some may be detained because of their ethnic nationality? Okay, and why some may be detained because of their language, you know, and their world view? But Amnesty International, we try to look into, you know, the rationale, you know, behind their being detained, and uh, as a result of this, if it is you know, actually, you know, found that uh, they are being wrongly detained. Amnesty International will equally champion their human rights cause, you know, to a logical conclusion that these people, you know, will gain their freedom. And uh, that is why it is said that Amnesty International, you know, focuses on the, you know, prison, you know, uh, or prisoners, so to speak. It also said that it opposes the death penalty and torture of other you know, cruel, inhuman, or degrading treatment or punishment of all prisoners without a reservation. It tries to campaign against, you know, death penalty, 
and the other crude, you know, uh, method, you know, of meeting punishment on the on the human beings, try to converse, you know, you know, for civilized way, you know, of uh, you know punishing human beings because their philosophy is that we are human beings with rational mentality. Therefore, you know, meeting treatment on any rational, you know, individual such you know treatment should be tantamount to the rationality you know of uh, you know that uh, species and uh, also uh Amnesty international report that is 1987 you know also you know gives you know the certain you know uh measure of treatment as well that has you know to be uh with uh, 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 uh with humanities you know so you know to to speak and also it is said that the organization engaged you know in practical work for prisoners within its mandate and part, you know, participate in the wider promotions and the protection of all spheres of human rights and uh, let us look into its membership its membership is open to every individual that you know deem fit to join okay you know it is not you know mandatory it is not, you know, coercive on any individual. It is, you know, uh, voluntary. That is, the membership of the organization is open to anyone. The volunteer members may belong to former Amnesty International bodies, such as, you know, sections which are the national coordinating bodies in countries and groups. Some do do not belong to either and are mere supporters in their individual capacity or uh, subscribers. So, and uh, it is equally noticed, you know, that uh, as of 1987, Amnesty International has more than 500,000 members, subscribers, you know, and supporters in over 150 countries, you know, and uh, territories. And also, it is said that at the beginning of 1987, you know, there were Amnesty International sections in 44 countries and 3,744 local groups in, in over 60 countries. Now, let us look into the finance. Like I told you, that the inter, you know, Amnesty International organizations is not being financed by any government. And the idea behind this is to actually not allow this organization to be manipulated by the government or to be to be uh, to be directed by the government or influenced by the government so the finances of this organization emanate from members free donations and uh, through publications and the world of view so because once you know it, it is independent of any government it will be difficult for such organization to be manipulated or to be influenced by any you know, government. And uh, it is said that given the nature of the aims of you know, Amnesty International, its financial independence is as vital as its political independence. Hence, it is entirely self-financing. Okay, The dependence of Amnesty International on public sources rather than government is to keep away political in, you know, interference you know, by government. So, to be independent and impartial, you know, it has to be self-financing. In order, you know, to in order to you know safeguard the organization's independence, all contributions are strictly controlled by guidelines laid down by the International Council. Its funding comes from individuals, members, fees, donations, and raising you know campaign and sales of publications. Other sources are public events and contributions by the group. I said it that uh, you know, the, you know, it finance, you know, you know, it, you know, comes, you know, from uh, uh, memberships, comes from, uh, you know, uh, uh, publications, comes from free donations and, uh, you know, worth a view. So that to actually, you know, uh, make, you know, government, you know, stay away from influencing. You know the organization, and uh, let us look at the organization of Amnesty International. It is said that uh, one, you know, essential, 
future of our nursing work is in its contribution of uh, grassroots okay, activities and uh, initiatives you know, at all national and international level. The activities of the various local groups in various sections in countries and on a variety of issues requires a degree of backup national and international you know, uh, levels. So, you know, it is segmented into various, uh, you know, local, you know, uh, groups in, 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 in various uh, countries, you know, that, you know, takes, you know, the activities, you know, in an hierarchical form, you know, to, you know, the, uh, to the center. So that is how the, you know, uh, organization actually uh, operates. And uh, here, we want to look at the local, you know, groups that we actually talked about. The local, you know, uh, uh, Amnesty International groups is, you know, is that it is the basic unit of the internet, you know, Amnesty International, you know, uh, structure and work groups normally consist of between 10 and 15, you know, members at uh, that uh, various, uh, you know, uh, level. This, however, could be more. This group, which are steadily growing and normally registered with the International Secretariat, each group work on behalf of at least two individual you know, prisoners of conscience in country other than its own. The group seeks the prisoners release, a fair and prompt trial, and further information about the prisoner situation depending on the nature of the case. And uh, let us quickly look into the internet uh, the sections. Amnesty International, it is said, you know, that is national section provide a focal point for amnesty action within their own country. They provide network for campaign and case work, you know, fundraising and publicity. The section also serves as an intermediary between their member group and the international uh, secretariat. So, you know, this is how it is being you know, organized in order to achieve, you know, the real you know, objectives for the uh, organization. And uh, the International Council of uh, Amnesty International Organization, this is the supreme growing, it's, you know, the International Council is the supreme growing body of Amnesty International. It is the apex or the zenith, you know, body of uh, Amnesty uh, International. It consists of representatives of five section who attended both as delegate and as observer. All the representatives, okay, of all sections, you know, are you know represented, you know, as you know delegate or as delegate or as an uh, as observers. And its function and power are we have just three here, which I would like to read out, you know, to you. It reviewed the activities of the International Executive Committee and the International Secretariat and endorses a plan for the coming year. Number two, it elects eight of the members of the International Executive Committee. It receives the account, approves the overall budget, and agrees on financial contribution to be made by all you know, sections. Okay, so that is you know the uh, the council. I mean the International Council, which is the you know the zenith of uh, the uh, Amnesty International. Then we now have number two, you know that is the organs of uh, in, in, uh, internet, I mean Amnesty International. We have the International Council, which is the supreme you know uh, uh, council, you know a supreme organ of uh, uh, Amnesty uh, International, and also the International Executive Committee is there. This body elected by the council to implement its policy. It acts as the main governing body between council meeting and it is responsible for the work of the national secretariat and not section. It has nine member, member seven each from a different you know, amnesty international section of country and the treasury as well as the international secretariat staff and representative, which is number two. The number three is international secretariat which, you know, serves as the administrative uh, head of uh, all the administrative activities of the uh, organization. It is based in London and staffed by local volunteers 
paid staff of about 150 people from at least 12 countries. You know, through his staff, the national section and group, you know, it's implement the strategy of the organization, which is formulated in overall times by an annual international council meeting representing the section and by international executive committee. And uh, we equally have the internal committee and the internal committee, apart from the above, it is said that this internal committee you know, exists, some international committee established by, by their, <clears throat> by either the international, you know, counselor, international executive committee, these committees advise the counselor, the executive committee, um, aspect of the organization, you know, work. And uh, let's also quickly look into the achievement of uh, Amnesty International. Number one, it has served in the promotion of human rights, particularly in the areas of prisoners' rights and freedom of thought and speech, right to life, freedom, you know, from inhuman treatment and torture, and right to fair trial. Hence, it is being referred to as the International Human Rights Watch Dog. And uh, also, number two, achievement, it has succeeded in preventing political imprisonment and, you know, maintains an uh, unending policy against a cruel, inhuman, and degrading, you know, punishment and evaluation of the right to life. And number three, it increases, it increases public awareness of human rights through the involvement of its members in human rights, education of citizens, and the educational materials like its numerous you know, literature. And the number four, you know, it checks the various state governments through Amnesty International Report published annually. And number five, it has helped to promote you know, improved inter international standards for the protection of human rights. Bodies like UNO have taken important steps, such as declaring a universal ban on the you know, torture. And uh, let us now look into, you know, uh, Amnesty International and uh, Africa here. How relevant is Amnesty you know, International to African continent? And uh, we are here, you know, made to understand that uh, Amnesty International is very weak in Africa. It is very, very weak because it is being manipulated, because the environment is not that conducive, and because that are falsifies and there's so many other you know variables you know that are, that are actually made you know Amnesty International you know to be very weak in the uh, African uh, uh, continent and he said that of the 44 section only four only four four that is Ghana, Ivory Coast, Nigeria, and Senegal were in Africa. That is you know they were only present uh, you know in the in, in Ghana, Ivory Coast, Nigeria, and Senegal, you know, you know, and there were, however, Amnesty International Group with no section in some orders. The achievement of you know, Amnesty International in Africa are as discussed above, but African section and group have not been effective as a such. It is very weak, you know, its presence is not you know, being felt, you know, in the uh, African, uh, you know, uh, continent. And she said that uh, you know the various problems are due to factors internal and external to Amnesty International section and groups, like I said earlier, in Africa. And also, you know, <clears throat> there is also the you know differing perception of Amnesty International. And uh, some of the internal problems are lack of communication between the section and their groups on one hand, and the sections or group and the international secretaries on the other, lack of committed commitment or motivation, lack of adequate finance, and lack of permanent staff. The external problem are the non-conducive political, social, and economic conditions in American state. Also, people are you know, in favors to Amnesty International as they see it you know, as Western organization. And it is also said that the policy of Amnesty International, which prevent local group, and national section from taking up cases in their countries made their contribution to be invisible as people cannot actually perceive its usefulness. So all these are, you know, affirmation have actually made you know Amnesty International to be very weak in Africa and it's said from what we just read out that uh, 
it is perceived in African, you know, context, you know, to be, you know, Western, you know, uh, uh, ideas, Western influence, and uh, you know, all that. So let us quickly go into uh, the, the the summary of uh, uh, of uh, uh, international, you know, um, uh, amnesty organization. The summary. It is said that. Uh, you know, international non-government organization, a voluntary and non-political organization, you know, established for certain uh, specific, uh, you know, uh, purposes. Number two, that they are established by individual group in, of individual without necessarily having to gain the consent of a government. Does not, you know, need to, you know, have the consent of uh, the government before, you know, it is it was established or before, you know, they carry out their, you know, activities. And the Amnesty International was founded by Peter Peter Benson in the United Kingdom in 1961. And uh, also, uh, Amnesty International aims at securing the immediate and unconditional release of all prisoners of conscience, ensure fair and prompt trials for all political prisoners, and abolish torture and uh, executions. And uh, uh, um, Amnesty International. Our section, you know, section in 44 countries and uh, 3,744 local groups in over 60 countries. Amnesty International is self-financing, and this is, you know, the basic basis of its political independence. And uh, the Amnesty International works through local, you know, Amnesty International group, you know, sections, the International Council, the International Executive Committee, and the International Secretariat. It also has International Committee. And uh, Amnesty International has recorded a lot of achievement in the field of uh, human rights generally. So this is the end of uh, you know uh, lecture uh, 11, and uh, we will go like you know like I said at the you know beginning of this lecture that it's actually end up in the you know lecture 11, but there are still other you know two more lectures which we would like to you know discuss you know uh, as an addendum. You know, to the original, you know, uh, chapter uh, one to eleven to make it uh, about a uh, chapter uh, fourteen, which will make the whole material holistic. And I want to assure you that tomorrow and day after tomorrow we will run it up to chapter uh, fourteen. And by next week, you know, by special grace of God, and I want to give my word, you know, I will send to you, you know, uh, more uh, thanks. Thank you very much, my. Uh, unique students, um, you know, for uh, your understanding on this, uh, you know, uh, Google Plus uh, uh, lecture. And uh, any comments, any uh, question or questions you may like to ask, do not hesitate, you know, to ask me. And an honest, you know, response, you know, will be, you know, supplied to it. Thank you uh, very much, and see you in subsequent uh, uh, classes.